How are we going, everyone? I mentioned the other day about some English box and legastrum hedging, so I'll touch base on it today. Uh, these are the legastrums, obviously. You can see it here, and these are one of the fastest growing um, plants, I suppose, if you're going to use those hedging uh, box leaf privets. It's known as that as well. It's it's a, a pretty fast plant. It doesn't well. It grows to about two and a half meters comfortably, three meters. These are sitting about one and a half. Sorry, one point eight. That's about one five, one six here. One five. Yeah, I'm not going to say that I'm one six foot tall. I'm six point two. So that's quite short, obviously. Now, in all seriousness, see the gaps in this one here. See how many gaps we have. Part of the reason is we don't prune it back often enough, regularly enough. Second to that, it actually needs to be thinned out in the middle as well. So when you let them grow too long, all the energy goes to the top of the plant. So whether it's a hedge, whether it's a fruit tree or a shrub that you have, if you let it get a bit too leggy and you needed to prune it and you didn't do that, you'll find that when you do prune it, anything left behind will be quite sparse looking. And on top, if you were to look on top here, in particular here, come around here, see it? you'll see all the wood and a lot of dead foliage on top of there as well. So I had to cut this pretty hard back to a bit of semi hardwood, which is not what you want to do. It's not ideal for any sort of plan, but being the legastrum, it does bounce back pretty quick. Now, what does this need to rectify the problem? We need to fertilize. Come here and see the gaps here. I'll show you this side. This is actually fantastic. Have a look at this. It's a dead forest up there. But in saying that, look, all the dead wood. But look in there, you'll see all the green coming up already. So there's green there showing up. If you can see where I'm pointing, I'm not sure, but nevertheless, you see the new leaves coming through. So it'll push through. Once we've got some sunlight in the middle of that, it'll bounce out. Now, this is dieback. This is because the sun, this is the, the shadow side. The sun actually shines on this side. That's why this is a lot greener than it is over here. And we've had a bit of dead wood in here, and this dead wood has to be taken out. See that there now? Is that dead? Yes, it is. It's all dead wood. As long as this is dead and in the way, it doesn't allow new growth to come through. So all that has to be cleared out. You can hear it cracking away to make way for the fresh green growth that's going to come through and a compost. So just a general purpose compost is all you really need to do. You can add our superfood if you like in black grid, but just a good compost or manure is all you need to do with these ones there. They'll bounce back pretty quick. So this was pruned five days ago, approximately five days. See the growth coming up already? Have a look at this. See all that? Bouncing out already. That's because of the humidity, the high levels of humidity and moisture that we have in the air in Victoria. Pro probably quite common in the other parts of Australia, but for us down here, it's pretty harsh. And this is the waste that we've got out of it. Now, ligastrum's mixed up with our conifer hedge. Bit of a curve there going on, isn't it, eh? So we've got all the tops to take off here at the moment. You can see the far end, the wall's been done. You can see a little bit of speckled brown coming through there. That's a bit of dieback. We call it canker. And it happens to conifers quite easily. And if it does spread, it can take over the whole tree. Look at it up there, it's dieback as well. Now, the reasons, well, I, I, what would I say? Let me ask my brain. Left brain, what are you saying? Ah, that's what you're saying. Your tool's unclean you're going to get that happening. You let it grow too long and a wispy like that, it will have some dieback at the bottom. And if there is any dieback and you don't clean it out fast enough, you know all those little needles that dry out? Come over here, I'll show you what I mean. Maybe this is not the best example because there's nothing settling here, but all this stuff here, when it falls down, it starts to mat out on the plants below. See here how it falls there? A very, very simple example, but that's not a lot there in this case here. But generally speaking, when you've got a nice dense wall and you've got a bit of dieback on top, those needles, the leaves that dry out, will fall down here. And when they do fall, they start to compact and suffocate the foliage underneath. So it's a self-destructive mechanism that starts to occur. That's what I've noticed with these. You may say there's a bit of sap um, oozing out there. The symptoms that you'll notice on the plants, that's the stress happening in the roots. There may be stress on the bottom, but these plants aren't suffering from water. We've got plenty of water here. What they need is a clean haircut and a more regular haircut, which is what I'm admitting here is that I don't cut them back often enough. You can see that from the top. But the other areas that we have cut back and if there's any die back, we need to clean them out. So clean your secateurs or your tools, your pruning tools, sharpen your hedge trimmers because if they're not sharp they don't cut they strip they shred and that's viral 
disease ready to happen. It's just a perfect environment for bacteria to get in. So you need to have clean, sharp tools. And if you do shred any part of the branch, if it's a thicker branch, when you do using, use a hedge trimmer and it starts to break off, if I could give you an example, see that dead wood but when it breaks off let's say that's the bottom of the plant the top part's broken off but we've got this strip effect going on if you have any branch left there with a strip like that and a cut like that you need to go back there with the secateurs or loppers and cut that off clean yes it is tedious but that's the only way you're going to clean it um, I, I go around with a blunt pair of hedge trimmers I'm known to use a blunt pair and then my young lad walks around behind me and cleans up every single one because he knows I'm not going to do that <clears throat> and he's been able to clean up and control all the dye back on our plants not all of them because he hasn't gotten around through everything but things like that you've got to cut them out you can't leave them in that has to be cut out and you work your way through it see there we've probably had some dye back earlier on in there out here and that's a typical telltale sign that that was struggling once upon a time here as well see all this dye back there that needs to be cleaned out see how it's all falling off you need to go around now I don't think everybody's got 800 meters or a kilometer of hedging like we have if you've got a 15 meter strip well spend a day out there and just take your time and clean it won't take you a day but do it don't do not leave it the longer you leave it the harder it is to recover and last one aren't they beautiful well we've got one of each here folks we've got a boy and a girl we've got Kara and Vader and where I'm standing here now is a nice little section of our garden, the courtyard garden. We've got our English box. What you see in the background down there is the Luma, or sorry, the Ligastrum undulatum that's been cut back and it's fallen on top of the English box. Looks like a mop top, but back on the English box over here, new growth coming on beautifully. Grass growing through the centre of it. But more importantly, all, of, all this dieback, have a look at that. There's not a lot that will kill English box. Honestly, there's not a lot that you can do to an English box, obviously a herbicide spray, you know, hydrochloric acid and things like that, or dog piss. That's exactly what it is. The biggest enemy of any English box plant, well, in particular my place, is Vader. Vader. That's him on cue. What are you doing, mate? Come over here. Show us how you do this damage. Huh? Come on. Show us how you do it. This is it, hey? Now, my best bit of advice for you folks is get yourself a female. They don't lift the leg up like these fat <laughs> mutts do here. <laughs> I was going to call him something else. But he's a gorgeous boy, so things like that. The English box will re repair itself. It won't work its way through to the rest of the plant. And it's a perfect segue to the next segment. But stay tuned for that tomorrow morning. In the meantime, check out our website, vasilisgarden.com, all the favourite products that you want on our website, heavily discounted, and a coupon code, MARESI, to get an extra 30% off the already discounted price. It's at vasilisgarden.com. Until tomorrow morning, MARESI. MARESI.